Look to our friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again it is time for another Orc Mode workout. And today was max effort upper day, but a quick reminder for those of you who watch these videos, please click like down below. Reach down there and do that. Go ahead. Thank you. It's greatly appreciated. So, let's get over to the training. Uh, I just ramped up to a relatively easy training max today. I didn't want to go all out, especially with this much band tension. This is a lot of band. I tend to be weak on lockouts anyways on benching. Uh, so I knew this is always going to be tough. And this is one of those where it felt really light coming off the chest. Eccentric was good. And when I got up near the top, it got a little grindy at the lockout pushing against the bands. Um, and that's that's relatively normal for me. And a lot of times people will say, well, it's only X amount of weight. For, for me, I cannot do more than my, my total max against bands on a bench. I can't do it. So if any given time, if my max is, say, 350, I'm not locking 360 of band tension at the top. I can't. And it's, it's always been that way. It's just the nature of my strength curve. That's one reason I like to do all these heavy bands and stuff for maxes, because they challenge me through my sticking points, and it makes me have to strain. <laughs> and it still unloads the, the shoulder at the bottom, right? Because I don't miss benches off the bottom. So here's what I decided to do, because I noticed it's, it's again, just trying to keep up with shoulder health and trying to maximize hypertrophy, because that's going to be the goal. I need to maximize all the muscle in my upper body at this point to get my bench back up moving again. I've got to rebuild the areas that atrophied as I rehab to the shoulder. And for, again, for those who forgot, pull-ups and chin-ups caused my shoulder issues. Okay, that's, that's where I got them from. It's not from pressing. It's not from heavy lifting. Pull-ups, chin-ups, we've covered all of that. I've done rehab. I've re-managed to aggravate it again a couple different times because I decided to work chin-ups back in and I realized this is stupid. No reason for me to do them. So... Today, instead of close grip pressing, I decided to do dips. You know why? They hit my pecs really hard. They hit my triceps hard. Even, even chest dips still work triceps. And of course, we're doing extra tricep work. But I'm like, well, I do need to make sure that my, my chest is growing. Okay, we could argue that my close grip pressing for rep work may not be doing that as effectively. Well, I need to make sure my pecs are growing. And I want a good big exercise as a primary movement right after my training maxes. Uh, so this works just as good as close grip, arguably better if I want my chest to grow more. Even though we're going to be doing a lot of delt and tricep focus, my shoulders are going to take an ultra high priority. And then obviously triceps. Which you guys will see through the training today as we rebuild up those angles I can now do again. Um, but these went, went, went pretty good because I do need some chest work in there making sure that I hit the chest. And I'm like, well, the decline will hit the low half, and the, or this will hit the low half, the dips. Incline can hit the upper half. Right, we'll get everything that way, along with making sure I build up the shoulders. And the incline is going to be really important, I think. And that's one reason I'm doing overhead pressing again, is to build my incline. I know it'll carry over. So these went well. I got like 12s on everything, and I might—I think I got 13 or something on the last one, 14, whatever I got. Uh, I need to go ahead and just increase the weight to a 55-pound plate. Then we did rows. I only did three sets today. I decided for all my pulling, because I'm going to do three different pulls today, we do three sets so that we get nine sets of pressing, nine sets of pulling. Even though technically one of the presses is an overhead, it's not chest. But then again, I'm doing a shoulder for the last pull. So everything's pretty well balanced, right? It's going to be balanced. And to deal with the fact that I do need the posterior delt stronger, I'll do flies afterwards, rear delt flies, the plates. And I'll do those later today. I haven't done them yet. I'll knock out three sets. It's just been kind of my protocol lately because uh, I was doing them every day for just a little while now. I feel like if I just do them at the end of each upper body workout, it'll ensure stimulus of the rear delt. But these, I went up five pounds today. We went up to 235, so we'll, we'll bring these on up. 235. Um, and they were challenging. I feel like I can, I can probably make another weight bump next time. I'll probably bump it five pounds again. But it went pretty good. Uh, three sets of 10 with 235 on Pendley rows. Pretty happy with them. I uh, got a lot of good stimulus. Felt, felt my whole back. And again, it helps us learn to get tight on the deadlift. So a lot of people say, what's one of the big perks with the Penley row? Well, look at how you set up on each rep. Doesn't that look like a conventional deadlift? It teaches you to get tight and to get build the isometric strength in your posterior chain to set up a tight deadlift. Okay. Now for me, we know that my deadlift is limited by grip, which is why I'm grip specializing on lower days now. Grip specialization is taking a big role. And I'm being very careful not to overwork my grip on these days because we're doing so much pulling. 
Uh, then I went up to the incline. These were easy today. I did another five pound bump because I started light and worked up. Now that I can do them again pain free. I'm trying to pause. Notice I'm pausing on all the reps. I went up to just 145 for 10. I got 14 on the last, last set. I took the last set. I'm like, let me just see if I can get more than 10. I got 14. Okay, I need to make a 10 pound jump next time. So instead of doing these little five pound jumps, because I did like 135, 140, then 145, I'll just go up to 155 next time. I, I think it's fair to say I can make a 10 pound jump on this and still get 10s. And we'll just build it from there. All right, build it from there. Because I didn't do as well on my overhead. They were hard for the five pound jump today. The incline though, this, this one, easy, 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 easy as can be. So the strength is re returning here. Um, and as people are noticing, yes, look at the range of motion. I'm, I have long arms. I'm doing these with a closed grip. I am doing this to create the longest range of motion possible. I'm pausing at the bottom. This is on a 45 degree. So some people might point out, like when I got up to a certain strength before and I was maxing on these, they're like, well, that's not that strong. Like, and I agree, it isn't that strong what I was doing. You know, like up to 155. But keeping in mind, it is paused and it is at a 45 degree. This is not a shallow incline. 45 degree without an arch. So, you know, the goal will be, hey, can I get this up to 185 for 10? If I get this up to 185 for 10, uh, probably time to test some maxes on this again. But again, I'm trying to do the version of this that will work as much muscle as possible. I'm making it hard on myself. The closed grip for that super long range of motion, and I get that deep stretch, and I feel a ton of chest on this. It lights up the whole upper chest front delt really effectively. I think even with the close grip, it's doing that. And it's, it's again, because I get that deep stretch, and especially the pausing. But, yeah, the last set, I got 14. A couple of these were touch and go because I kind of, I was getting in a hurry because I'm like, I'm just going to amp rep this one a bit. And, yeah, even the 14th, it didn't grind. It locked right out, racked it. I probably could have got a 15th if I wanted to. Like, okay, I need to increase the weight on this. All right, this didn't go as well as I had hoped. As you guys will notice, I put chains in the description. We just pretended this set didn't happen this way. I'm like, let me try the 25. Then I could even grip it right with this big plate. Then it slid out of my belt and was up on my face. It was basically on my chin for most of the set. I went ahead and followed through with the set because you know what? If you start something, you need to finish it. <laughs> But I realize this is not going to work. Let me just go back to the chains. So the next two sets, I put 34 pounds of chains on my chest. And I went ahead and did them with the half loops the way that I, I do with uh, the way they're set up to power lift instead of just running the whole length of chain across me. And this way, the, the chain is actually not really on the floor. Right? So we're actually pin lay rowing pretty much the whole way to the chain. Notice they're not on the ground. They barely touch when I'm at the bottom. So this is basically 34 pounds of weight. This was much more manageable. It didn't get in the way of my grip. I could do the, the normal shoulder width grip. Uh, I got 12 on both. Although on the second set, it, I did one rep and one of them slipped down. So I had to reset it all. So I did another 12 after that. So uh, when I get over to do that, you guys will notice I, it's one of them half slides off. So I re-get it up there and restart the whole set. And I managed to get 12. So I think we're at a point with these, I need to add a hair more weight. I do need to add a hair more weight. Um, I'll figure out how much weight to add. I don't know how much I need to add. Maybe another 12-pound chain. Because of, the, because of the angles involved, I don't think it's going to make a massive difference. Right? Because even this, because I did the 10, I don't know, what, what did I do? 13, 14, whatever I did last, last time. So even getting 12 with this, you know, another 24 pounds didn't make an enormous difference. You know, it didn't make an enormous difference. So I could probably throw one of my little 12 pound chains on there because I threw a pair of 17s. And with this, I went up to 115 today, keeping in mind how weak my overhead has been. So for me to even do this for 10s is, is progressing. Uh, and again, close this grip possible. And yes, I know I'm not coming all the way down. There's no need in it right now. I'm not worried about getting rotation of my shoulder at the bottom. Uh, that's a concern for me right now is, is potentially shoulder injury while I'm rebuilding those rear delts and, and strengthening up that infraspinatus after it got inflamed. So I'm a little reluctant to go super low, it's like as long as I get below the chin. You know, in the first one we have to start a little lower. I just come down to just below the, just below the chin level. Almost touching, but not quite. 
Um, these were tough today. That little five pound jump, because I did 110 last time. Uh, that five pound jump was, was actually challenging. These were hard. And I only did 10s. I just stopped at 10 on everything. Even the last set, I'm like, ah, I don't know if there's an M rep in there. So again, what's a goal to get back to? For, what's, what do we want to get to for this again? Well, I think 135. When I can do 10s with 135 on this, uh, I think we'll have rebuilt some, some decent shoulder strength at that point. So these are the goals that I need to be setting. I need to be setting short-term goals. Because again, these are, these are old lifts that I've been stronger at. I've been stronger at. Um, and like, what do we mean stronger even on that incline? Well, people remember and they look back and said, didn't you do like 275 with a triple on that close grip quite a few years ago on camera? Yes, I did. So we, we need to build up. But again, after rehabbing that shoulder. So then I'm like, well, I need to continue to focus on this shoulder trend. And if I can do these pain-free, I know I'm in a good situation. So I decided to, to go with my snatch grip high pulls again. Uh, I didn't go... 100% heavy, I'm like, well, let me start with 185 for 10. Because I was doing one, 135 for 20s when I was doing them last. Uh, and I went with a coarser bar and I went with the, the regular straps instead of the figure eights. Mainly because of the figure eights with certain, certain times they slip. So the problem with the wider grip in general is that it slips. Um, and, and even then, for me getting a super snatch grip, it just, my hands slip. Maybe I'll be able to get this, this bar and these wraps a little wider than what I did right here. And I think the next couple sets I went a little wider. But the 10 rep sets were good. They were relatively easy even after overhead pressing. Uh, so I'll go ahead and bump these up. I'll take these up 10 pounds next time. And we'll work back up towards 225. And I think that'll be a good position to be in uh, in terms of my, my strength base and where my shoulders need to be. If I can get these back up to uh, 225 for 10s, I think we'll be good to go. I think that'll help me a lot. So, again, the name of the game, what, what are we doing with all this? Well, we are making sure we're getting some chest work in with the dips and, and definitely the incline, but shoulders. Shoulders and triceps are going to be a big priority. Obviously, building my whole back up is a priority, uh, but shoulders and triceps, my entire shoulder girdle, I need all three heads of it. I need the entire trap. Everything needs to come up from my benching and my shoulder stability uh, because we're still seeing we're seeing delt weakness on my, on my benching in general when I hit a heavy single. We see delt weakness. It's absolutely there. So the incline will help. The incline will be the main tool. The overhead pressing will help the incline. Lots of tricep work. And of course, you know, since we're, we're doing a lot of pressing, guys, I mean, nine total sets of pressing, not counting the maxes is a lot. So there's definitely tricep work there, but we know that my triceps have historically been a weak link in my bench. So as soon as the delts get caught back up, what are we going to see? My triceps start limiting my bench again. So we need to get ahead of that curve now and work these tricep exercises back in, which we won't call the J-Yum press because people don't like the way I do it. And, and I, I got confused. I saw after my last one of these sessions, I had someone say, isn't it bad to not touch your chest? What's the advantage of not touching your chest on a bench press? And uh, I guess they think that this is a bench press. This bar isn't above my chest. And I, and I guess because of the angles I'm doing it, it's really hard to get a side shot. Like, I guess people who are looking aren't realizing the bar isn't over my chest. It's over my face. Well, you don't want to touch your face with a bar. And we don't want to go lower than, than just what the shoulder joint allows for. Because at a certain point, if you're going lower and lower, you're, we're just dropping our elbows all the way down. This is a tricep exercise. The bar, the bar is above my mouth. Right? And above the chin, the mouth and chin area. But this bar isn't above my chest. It's, it's not even above my neck. It's all it's over over the bottom of my face. So it's not a bench press at all. This is this is a tricep exercise. Okay. Now, we won't get into the, all the differences between this and the way the JM press is taught by Blakely. We'll just call it my tricep exercise, or some people are calling it the Blaha press. Oh, but I'll just call it the tricep exercise. Because that's what it is. It's the exercise that I really feel the medial head of my triceps light up, the whole area down near the elbow, which is what I need to continue to work on for my benching. And it works a different part of my tricep than the dip does as far as where I feel it. Because I feel the medial head on this, and I feel the lateral head on dips. Uh, these seem a little bit stuck, though. I've been stronger in the past, and I've started working with these again, and I'm trying to just work with the 135 for 10, but these are hard. 
these are challenging right now. So I'm going to have to work with what I can and try to keep getting stronger at these. But it may be hard to do this deep into a workout. I've done all this other pressing. I've done the dips first. Um, it, it may be difficult to really see these improve dramatically. And that's okay. I accept that if that's the case. Um, and then I finished up just to make sure that my biceps and brachialis and forearms got finished off. I just did one set of hammer curls to failure. Keeping in mind, we're doing a lot of pulling. But, you know, we could argue that maybe a little bit more bicep work. And because I think I want to try to deadlift tomorrow, I don't want to do a bunch of sets of hammer curls. I might next workout do more than one set. But these do fatigue grip. My grip is my current weak link on my deadlift, as everyone knows, which is why we're, we're deadlift, we're grip specializing on lower days after the pulling. So I didn't want to overdo that, but I do feel like I need that extra work there. My biceps and arm in general and forearm could use the extra work. So one good set to failure after all that other rowing, not a bad idea. So I decided to do it. But overall, good workout. Uh, everything went, went pretty good today. Everything went smooth. Ramping up some of these new lifts that we're bringing back in. Shoulders in a, in a very, very good place. So we're going to just build the whole upper body back up, get the bench up, get stronger. So I hope it has been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.